also beginning to cast my friend's moth in some resin. So I have a base. I don't know whether you can see that. This is resin here. And I am going to actually cast my moth now. Um, so when I'm pouring out the resin, I've got to measure my resin. Um, let's do, ooh, uh, let's see. So yesterday I went for about 10 mils. So I'm going to go for, um, 15 to 20 mils. There we go. That's one. And, um, I actually read the instructions to this um, because I was like, oh yeah, this is all fine, this is all fine. And then I found out that you don't actually, right, here we go. Yeah, you don't actually have to um, heat the resin as I actually thought you needed to do. Um, I did heat a little bit on the surface yesterday. Um, all right, let's just scrape some of this extra out. So yeah, I did um, heat the surface slightly yesterday to make sure that uh, there wasn't any air bubbles. However, after reading the instructions, I found that it actually does the air bubbles itself. Um, so you don't actually need, oh, I've got a big blob of yuck here. You don't actually need to, um, run the lighter all over it. Okay. So I've got my, it's a little bit swirly. So I'm just gonna mix this nice and slowly until there's no swirls in it. I don't know whether you guys can see. Um, but there's these kind of swirly bits in. Uh, I'm mixing the epoxy and the hardener together until there is no swirly bits left. No swirly bits left. Um, it's, it's a good idea to go slowly with this because um, you do get absolutely loads of air bubbles. Um, my plan yesterday was to wait until this layer had hardened, um, but not completely hardened. Um, but it was quite tacky um, and sticky and runny still for quite some time. Um, so I decided I was just going to do one layer and then put my moth in and then put another layer in. Um, so I'm trying it a little bit different this time. So I'm hoping this will work. Right, I'm almost mixed. Just got to make sure there's no more tackiness in here, um, swirlies in here. So I don't know whether you can see, there is quite a few air bubbles in here. So the instructions state to leave the resin for about five minutes um, until all the air bubbles have gone. So I am going to leave that for a few minutes. I think we are all mixed in. Right. So my plan is I have my moth in here. Um... I can't recall exactly the species of moth, but here he is. And uh, my friend had this moth and he was alive and he was beautiful. Um, and she fed him and was trying to get him back to full health. However, moths don't really live that long. So he unfortunately passed away and she asked me to cast him in resin so we could preserve him forever. Um, so I've got to be really, really careful with this and make sure um, that I don't screw it up. Um, I am going to just heat the resin a little bit in this pot to try and get some of the big air bubbles out. Like, uh, a little bit on my finger and I'm just gonna stick that there 
So, oh, whew, smells interesting. So what I'm gonna do is stick a little blob of resin in the middle um, where I'm gonna put my moth because I think that will stick him down a little bit and he's not gonna move. I'm, this is really scary for me because I was hoping he was gonna be like, yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna sit in the resin, right. Um, I did mention yesterday I've had a go at casting various um, insects in resin prior. Uh, these are all um, insects that I've, I've either found dead or they are casings. So I used to keep um, Madagascan hissing cockroaches for quite some time. Um, and every so often these guys, as they were growing, they'd shed. So you'd end up with this perfect casing, well, occasionally perfect. Sometimes it was all in bits, uh, but sometimes you get a perfect casing, which is basically like the outer exoskeleton of these um, Madagascan hissing cockroaches. And they looked like a hissing cockroach, but they were completely hollow. Now these were really, really light, as in weight, light um and i had issues trying to cast them because they would float in the resin so i put them at the bottom of the mold pour in my resin they'd float to the top and then you'd get an air bubble underneath where they'd been in contact with the mold so um i've got a few examples of ones that really went wrong uh this one is a dead cricket so I don't know whether you can see. So on this side, he actually doesn't look too bad. Um, he's nice and flush. But on the other side, and this is the uh, the side that was not in contact with the mold, you can see he's just his little legs are poking out of the uh, the resin. Um, they're rock hard and they are coated like the outer layer is coated but it's not as decent result as I'd like it to be. Um, he was one of the crickets that are fed to our invertebrates here. And also uh, some of the reptiles. Um, so he'd, he'd passed away and I thought, right, we'll try and sort of experiment with ways of um, getting him in resin. And I did struggle a little bit so my new method that we're working well, while I'm working with this moth is to try and get him to stick very carefully on my um on my mold right so I'm gonna use a lollipop stick because I don't want to touch him okay let's go really carefully underneath so I kind of know roughly where about so I want him to be in the mold. Oh, and I dropped him. All right, just carefully, carefully. So he's gonna go about here. Now I think I want his um his little antennas out a little bit, um, but I don't think we can. So he's not completely flush, but he is now gonna be held in place with the sticky little bit of resin I put on there. Um, I don't know whether you can see, this is where he's gonna sit, dead center. Um, if it's too large a surface area, I am gonna trim him down, um, but I'm not gonna worry too much at the moment. So let's have a look. Our air bubbles are still in there. Um, normally I would pour the resin into the mold um, and then heat it with a lighter. However, I am slightly concerned that um, if I pour it in and then heat it, I'm going to set fire to my moth and I really don't want any damage at all to my moth. So, I'm just heating slowly little bits in this um, 
in this tub that I've got here. So I'm waiting and it's it's kind of, some of them are going, some of the air bubbles, some of them are not. So there's really, really tiny ones in there now. Um, but not like, not like major ones. So I'm going to try and get the worst of them out. Right, okay. Oh, ow, ow. So you've got to be really careful using these lighters. Um, I'd probably recommend a weatherproof lighter uh, just because it's not going to burn your fingers. Um, but I think this is probably the best I'm going to get. So I'm now going to start pouring over my moth. Right, are you ready? Here we go. So it's spreading out a little bit. But it's looking pretty good with not that many air bubbles in it. I'm gonna do this in layers. Um, I am gonna need a little bit more resin because I want to do the whole lot. Where's my... Right, okay, so... We're looking good, but he's still poking out the top, so we're gonna need a little bit more than I anticipated. So I'm just gonna measure some more. Um, okay, let's go. Another 15. So resin is super, super messy. Um, so you've got to be really careful with <laughs> Right, okay. I need some more of the A in here. There we go. Okay, so let's pull these guys together. I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping this works um, and I don't get a moth poking his little head out. But my, um, what I was previously doing with insects is just do two layers. So my, what I'm going to do this time is I will do two layers uh, as before, uh, but then I'm going to do a third layer when it's set. So then we're kind of, we're rock and rolling. So here we go. We're going to mix this. I mean, he's going to, he's going to stay where he is now, um, which is good. Previously, they floated. He doesn't appear to be floating. His wings are now encased in the resin, which is great. Um, I don't know whether you can see the swirliness in here. Right, and then let's do that. See, these swirls, I want to get rid of these swirls. No swirls, please. No swirls, please. Going slowly does decrease the massive air bubbles that you do get in this resin. However, it's never gonna get rid of them completely. Um, sitting for a few minutes and just letting it, letting it sit um, seems to work. Um, so the, these are self-expelling. Um, previously, I had resin in these pots, so I had a part A and part B. Um, I do think I prefer them in the bottle and the measuring cups. Um, I do prefer to use weight rather than um, uh, like measure purely because I don't know whether you can see here. Um, so we've got, I've, I've measured those, yet there's like a little bit still in the bottom. And waiting for that to drip out takes forever. Oh, hello, hello in the chat. So I've got Jacob August one in the chat, hi. So yeah, I do have rats, snakes, um, cockroaches. Well, we don't have cockroaches anymore. Um, I am gonna do a little video later um, with 
it's kind of a tour of all the different species that we have here. Um, so I currently own uh, my rats and I do keep and breed my rats and show them as well. Um, which some people find very strange, but it is more common than you think now. Um, I have a quite a big collection of invertebrates now. Um, most recently we've got ourselves some isopods, which are really cool. So I've got uh, a group of dairy cows. Um, not actual cows, but um, the, the species dairy cow. And I have some uh, orange as well. And these guys turned up oh, was it yesterday or day before? Day before yesterday, which is quite exciting. Um, I've not had ice pods before, um, but I've wanted some ice pods for quite some time. And we thought, you know what, we're going to take the plunge uh, with the orange and the dairy cow just to see... Um, just to see how they do. Um, I didn't want to jump in and get uh, rubber duckies, which are uh, Asian isopods. I want to say Asian. Um, they're really cute and they kind of look like little rubber duckies. Um, but they are quite pricey and I didn't want to get some isopods that were potentially not going to thrive in the environment that we have. Uh, I used to keep Madagascan hissing cockroaches. Uh, we kept them for, oh, let's see, about seven or eight years. Uh, I love them. They're amazing. If you ever want, like, a cool pet for, for kids just to, like, get into bugs and things, these guys are so chill. You can literally just put them on your hand and they'll just hang out. Um, the the best two I ever had uh, were my girls, um... I had Wanda and Natasha, so we went with a Marvel theme for the names. Um, but they, um, they did they did quite well. They were older roaches when they arrived, um, but there's something in my house that just doesn't work with uh, roaches. They were they were fine the adult roaches, but breeding just wasn't happening. Um, so that was quite disheartening after I lived in a flat uh, about, I think we've been here about nine years now, but nine, nine years ago we had roaches in the flat um, and they did really well. They were surviving, they were happy, they were thriving and they were breeding so well. Uh, but just here it's just not working for them. Um, I've also got uh, assassin bugs, which you don't want to be touching because they're kind of scary. Uh, they, when they get their food, they will literally grab it and stab their little mouth parts in, liquefy the insides and then suck the insides out. It sounds hideous. Um, they're fascinating little things um, and they are really cool. Um, they're quite cheeky as well. You'll see them like tapping on the glass when they want their their lunch um so we've got those guys i've got a jungle scorpion scipio who is really angry he will attack water he will attack anything that comes into his uh enclosure um and then i also have a whip scorpion tailless whip scorpion uh his name is mr whippy <laughs> yeah Great names here. So Mr. Whippy, he's more nocturnal, uh, but we have a red light to uh, shine to see him when he's kind of out and about doing his thing. Uh, I jumped into the world of uh, arachnids uh, two years ago or a year ago, a year ago. Like major, major arachnids. Um, yeah, we do have a zoo going on. <laughs> Um, I've got a tarantula, curly head uh, tarantula called a Nancy. And then my um, Philippus Regis jumping spider arrived this year, early on this year, and his name is Joe Biden. <laughs> because Joe Biden was being inaugurated in America at the time 
that my spider turned up and we needed a name for him and I was like little Joe Joe the jumpy so we went go for it let's 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 go with Joe so Joe's really cute um but he's quite hard to photograph so you need a macro lens um so streaming wise he just looks like a tiny little blob just whizzing around his little box thing um who else have we got uh oh yeah bill the bearded dragon so we're gonna meet him a little bit later on big bad bill came to me as a rehome uh because the person who had him before was uh the the family was having a baby so there just wasn't the room for him and the time that they wanted to dedicate to him. He's been with us six years now. I'm looking at him. He's just over there. Um, six years and he is, he's crazy. We love him. Um, just over here, you can probably see an enclosure just here. This is Radley. He is a lavender corn snake and he arrived oh two months ago and he is literally the friendliest corn snake you have ever seen he's he's fantastic i absolutely love him oh i think we've mixed in our there is a little bit of air bubbles in here but i'm not gonna worry because they are so small um they're inconsequential to what i am attempting to do okay so we're going in. I've got a nice layer over this moth now. Um, let me just get a bit more out. I don't like scraping so much uh, because you end up with like air bubbles. So I could probably do one more layer on this, but I'm not gonna do it now. Um, let's just get this one coated. So this little guy, I'm really hoping, I have had issues with um, resin, not, it, it, I don't know whether it's just the, how, it, how it cures, but um, it does take the color out sometimes and we're hoping this is gonna not take the color out of my little moth dude. Right, we probably need one more layer on, but I'm gonna let this one dry first because it's still a little bit gloopy. So yeah, we have, we also have another corn snake, ZL. Uh, she was abandoned on um, someone's doorstep. Um, and she was used for breeding um obviously whoever had her thought they were going to make money out of selling baby corn snakes however uh they just bred her and bred her and bred her and she was just tiny very undernourished uh the friend who uh found her on their doorstep uh fed her up a little bit got her to a point where she was in, in slightly better condition and then I went and picked up Ziel. Uh, she is a snow corn, uh, so she's albino snake. Um, she was about 30 centimetres, 40 centimetres, so I don't know how many inches that is, 16? 16 inches? We'll go with 16 when she arrived. She was very small, very thin. Uh, it was, she was very tiny and over the years we've had her probably about seven or eight years now uh no we've had her six years six years ZL. and uh, she has gone from tiny little 40 centimeter 16 inch snake to um a five foot snake um she is now just over a meter and a half um, she doesn't like being handled, I'm guessing, because of her past treatment. She's not, she's not keen. We've kind of gone, you know what, that's fine. Um, she's just yawning right now. I wish I could flip the camera. Um, <laughs> so cute. She, um, she's grown quite big. She's not keen on handling. So she lives in her vivarium. We converted a five foot bow fronted fish tank for her. Um, it was previously home to my first bearded dragon, Barney, who passed away, and then we had this empty tank, and we just couldn't, couldn't bear to just 
leave it empty and then Ziel arrived and we thought, yep, yeah, perfect. She lives in there, she's pretty chill, she's happy. Um, and I don't force her to be handled just because it's cruel. You know, she doesn't want to be handled, but she's living out a, a pleasant and comfortable life in here. She has so much space. <laughs> Normally people with corn snakes have these tiny little enclosures. She's got a big one. Um, so she's pretty happy. Um, and she is enormous now. She's quite a thick snake. Um, we also have Garrick, um, word up Star Trek fans. Um, yeah, I'm one of you guys. We have, um, a, ge a gecko. He's a crested gecko called Garrick. I got him for my 30th birthday. So like four years ago. He hates my guts. Um, I do handle him sometimes when we're cleaning him out, but he's like, no, don't come near me. I'm not eating any food that you've eaten, like touched. Um, so he kind of just hangs out on his own in his tank. He seems happy enough. He's put on weight, so he's quite a chunky boy now. Um, so we've got him as well. Who else we got? The rats, that is a whole separate video for the rats. Um, currently, we're rocking about 40. Uh, <laughs> people are like, oh my God, you got 40 rats? Your house must be overrun. No, my house is not overrun. We have one, two, I've got two double cages and two single cages at the moment. Uh, one is a single male who, he is about to intro with some extremely old ladies so he can hang out with his little harem of ladies and he won't be uh, impregnating them. Um, but other than him, I've got my three old ladies. Um, they're getting on a bit now. They're all over two. I've got my younger girls that were born this year. So that's two litters. No, three litters. Yeah, three litters. So that was two of my own and a rescue litter. So they've all stayed. Uh, downstairs, I've got my double cage of my stud bucks and boys on the bottom and my girly wellies on the top. Um, and they are fabulous. I love them so much. Um, I do miss showing. I gave up showing, ooh, two years ago. Um, but... I may go back to it at some point. Right, we've got a little bit more here, so I'm just gonna dollop on top here. So I think he's all encased, but we are gonna have to do another layer. Ooh. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need another layer. So I reckon one more layer in here. I'll just make sure he's down in the... Yeah, he's as far as he can go. So he's not moving anywhere, which is good. So, um, I've got really sticky hands now. I don't know whether you can see them, right? I'm just gonna wash my hands one second. Oh. oh my God, yuck. So, um, Resin is super, super sticky and it's kind of like, ugh, and it's on your hands for hours afterwards. So I'm gonna go with leaving for a little while, let this cure. I want it sort of a sticky, tacky, like it's gonna, I would say you're like half hardened um, before I do the next layer. I don't want one layer, then the moth, and then in one layer, and then another layer on top. I don't want it to split. I want it to be one full organic piece. Um, I am gonna trim it because it is slightly too big, but I want it quite thick. Um, I am just gonna get some of the air bubbles out here. There's some major ones here. Right. But I'm not gonna go near my moth because I don't wanna burn him. Um, oh my goodness, a Dalmatian, ah! <laughs> oh my God, we do have a dog. <whistles> Lokes. So this is Loki, um, I don't know whether you can see her, she is a pointer collie lurch across. Come here, good girl, good girl. 
Probably can't see her that great, but she will appear in other videos, I'm sure. She was a rescue and she is my baby. I love you, baby. Yes, I do. You're a good girl. You can come and hang with me. Thanks for the dog hair. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So she kind of like, she's got a few spots like a Dal Dalmatian, but not like, um, really spotty she looks more collie on her head mixed with pointer but she is just my cutie pie um i oh i wish i could have like a hundred dogs but unfortunately i don't have the space uh our house isn't that big people go oh my god you must have loads of room in your house if you have all these animals no i definitely do not um yeah it's not a big house we just manage we manage um but she is just my little pookie pie, aren't you? Yes, I know you are. Yes, you are. So what I'm going to do, I am going to end the stream shortly because I want this guy to cure. Um, I'm just looking from the side and he's probably got another we are going to need. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, so he's, <laughs> he's definitely going to need some more. Um, but, uh, I'm kind of torn here because I know I could probably get another layer in. However, I'm gonna have to flip reverse it. Um, I have tried this before, uh, where I've started and then turned out the mold and then filled the mold halfway and then put it back in, but... I'm just concerned that it's not going to work. However, I am doing, I'm going to trim this one um, or file it. I haven't decided yet. Probably file it um, because <clears throat> the thought of trimming and then it all just shattering into pieces it just breaks my heart and I can't deal with that. Um, and I want to make sure it's cured completely. Um, some of my earlier bits... Uh, they, they were mixed properly, but the heat of the sun has like melted them. So they stick together in my little bag. So I don't want to do that. <clears throat> oh, so croaky today. So, um, I also found these little kind of cute little grass pieces and I'm like, could I put those in or is that just going to spoil it? I think it's probably going to spoil it. I'm just going to go with single moth and go with that. Um, so... If I got any more resin left, no, we've not really got much left there. So what I'm gonna do is leave it to do its thing. Um, I am gonna wipe my bottles here because I don't know whether anyone saw the stream yesterday, um, but I showed you that the problem I have with my ramekin. I'm not gonna move it because it will like move my moth. However, um, I was like, oh yeah, just scoop it out plop it on i have got drips down the side so then my resin cured and the resin in the jar cured and um it cured to my glass uh worktop protector that i've been using for my crafty bits and so now i have a permanent um i have a permanent ramekin uh, that is stuck forever to this glass worktop I have no idea how I'm gonna get it off. Um, I haven't got that far yet. Uh, <laughs> so it might never come off, but I'm hoping, you know, we'll we'll go with it, we'll go with it. Uh, for anyone who wants to know, uh, the resin stuff I have is Fans Arish. It's quite cheap, Amazon, about 15 pounds. Uh, next day delivery, nice and easy. Uh, mine ran out uh, as I was halfway through curing. And I was like, oh my God, uh, they they turn up really quick. Um, this could vary country to country. I'm in the UK, so I got next day delivery quite quick for like five pounds. Uh, that was fine. Um, but I would, I would probably go for something in a bottle uh just for ease of pouring um i'm just making sure that i i have the same amount left of each of the hardener and the other that was a problem i had with um with the these little tubs they were great 
<clears throat> excuse me, they were really good, but trying to measure equal parts out was really challenging. And I think I'd rather go with something that's slightly easier. Um, this kit came with pipettes. Don't bother, there's no point. Uh, you can suck up the resin in the pipette and then trying to get it out again doesn't work. Um, and you end up with uh, resin curing in your pipette and you end up with a useless pipette. So I don't know why they put these in there, but you know, whatever. They have gloves, but you're just gonna end up with the, the poorest ones, the ones with the little breathing holes in. So again, pointless. Um, you also get some glitter. Now, I don't know whether you can see, there is glitter everywhere. Um, I have done a few glitter things. Where are we? Let's see if I can find one. So, I can't find any that are specifically glitter right now. But I have done um, glitter pieces. Ah, here we go. Right. So, this guy is a wrapped one. And he is literally like six different types of glitter and you mix glitter with resin that's it there's glitter everywhere um it's not fun you get glitter it's it's all over the place you will never ever get rid of this glitter it will just be with you forever like forever and ever um <laughs> so the best thing to do is just avoid the glitter but um uh, things like beads seed beads do um ooh, Let's try and get that. So I know whether you guys can see that, but like seed beads are quite good as well. I really like the effect on those. <coughs> Molds you can get fairly easy off of like eBay, uh, Amazon, again, uh, just anywhere really. Uh, craft store sell them. I have yet to try um, the cake molds. I think they do cake pops. Um, I don't know what on earth a cake pop is, but I think they're like things that you put your cake mixture in, you cook them and then they're like really tiny so you can make them on a lollipop. If I'm wrong, then someone correct me, but that's, that's the idea I got from cake pops. So they, they would work as well. You just want some silicon mold. Uh, you can get really cute ones with like Lego men in so you can actually make your own like little Lego men heads or pieces um, Body pieces or you can get like a whole Lego man if you want to do like jewelry and things um, But it's I mean, it's just a standard clear resin uh, What I would say is use a dye if you want different colors rather than say acrylic paint acrylic paint it, it mixes with the formulation somehow um i did a few little ones where i just experimented my first resin set i was just experimenting to see effects colors uh where are they so i've got I've tried different flowers. If you're doing flowers, just kind of bear in mind that you are going to lose colour. Um, I can't find any of the ones that I did with... Uh, no, I can't find them now. Uh, so I did have one where I put acrylic paint into the resin and swirled it. I thought this would look cool. Uh, it didn't cure whether that was down to me and my uh, my ratios or whether it was the acrylic paint but every single piece that I've used acrylic paint in has not uh, cured properly so I would say try get some dye um, you can get resin dyes um, you can get glitter glitter is an option it's kind of cute or uh, you can put anything in resin really. I've got sequins in this one. Um, there's a little Lego wrap. Um, but I mainly go for, if you're gonna do colors, try and get, uh, ah, here we go. So this is my, uh, the one I had with acrylic paint in. It's kind of an interesting effect, but not what I was after. So if you want a full, like different color all the way through then you have to add your dye as you're mixing the two parts together and then you tend to get slightly better 
uh, results. Um, other than that, you can literally put anything in resin and that's kind of why I love it. Um, so right now, before I go, I'm going to show you, here we go. This is my moth here. Here he is. He's looking quite dark, but I'm guessing when he cures, he's going to look a lot better. Um, and then hopefully once he's set, it's going to look amazing and clear. It looks like my air bubbles are slowly, I mean, there's little ones. Obviously, the moth itself is going to expel air as well. Um, but we will see. I'll give this another, say, four or five hours, and then we'll see how it's doing. In the meantime, peace out, people, and I will see you guys shortly for um, to meet all my animals. Mwah. Bye!